Hello everybody, Matt Topo here, and today we are going to be discussing some examples of where Dirichlet convolutions can come into handy, and uh, we'll be discussing some uh, problems and some exercises that we can do with Dirichlet convolutions, and we will be solving them today. So let's get right into it. Um, the first example will be the function 1 convolutes 1, and we'll see exactly uh, what this is. So, so we'll, the first exercise will be prove that 1 cross 1 is equal to d. And uh, if you forget what any of these uh, arithmetic functions are throughout the video, you can always reference the arithmetic functions video, which I published before this. So, uh, wonderful, let's, let's, get, let's get right into it. Well, this is equal to the sum over d divides n of 1 of uh, d times 1 of n over d. But if you recall our definition of 1, 1 is equal to 1 for all inputs. So no matter what the input is, this always takes on a value of 1. So now we have 1 times 1. So sigma over d divides n of 1. So, well, what is this equal to? Well, this is basically, uh, the, the, well, let's look at the size of our sum set. So this sum set, uh, d divides n, uh, basically it, 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 the size of that is the number of divisors of n. So when we take the number of divisors of n and multiply it by one, we get equal to number of divisors. And if you recall, there is a function which suits this, which is, you guessed it, d. So wonderful, we have proven the first case, and the first case was, the first example was fairly simple, but the other examples uh, from four onwards will be uh, fairly hard. So let's, let's get into the next one. Prove that n convolute one is equal to sigma. So again, if you forget what any of these functions are, you can reference my other video on that. So let's, let's get right into it. We have sigma d divides n, n of n, or n of d, times uh, 1 of n over d. But 1 of n over d is always 1, because 1 of anything is 1. And n of d, because it spits back the input that you gave it, is always going to be d. So what, what do we get? We get d times 1, which is equal to d. So this entire uh, summit becomes d. And what happens when you take each of the divisors of n and add them together? Well, that's basically summing the divisors. And we have a sum of divisors function, which is equal to sigma. So wonderful. Now we can prove the more general case. And in fact, our proving of this next example, our proof of this next example, will, um, will, will, will basically, you could derive our, our previous proof. So, so let me, let me uh, write this down. Our next problem will be prove that n to the power of k convolute 1 is equal to sigma k. So now you can see that if we add k is equal to 1, and, and by the way, when I say n to the power of k, that means n to the power of k of n is simply equal to n to the power of k. And note that these are small n, and this is a big n. So wonderful, now that we have that clarified, note that when k is equal to 1, then we simply have the case n cross 1 is equal to sigma, which is what we just proved in the previous example. So let's get ahead and prove the general case. So what is the general case? Sigma d of n, uh, d divides n, of n to the k of d times 1 of n over d. And 1 of n over d is equal to 1, so we can forget about that. And we have n to the k of d. And remember how we defined n to the k. n to the k of something, or, or n to the k of some input, is equal to the input to the power of k. So this will equal d to the power of k. So we have sigma of d divides n 
of d to the power of k. And what is this equal to? Well, this is equal to sigma sub k. If you remember how we defined that, this, uh, this proof follows. So wonderful. We've proved our third example. Now is where things will begin to get a little bit tough. So uh, let's jump to our fourth problem. Prove that lambda uh, star one is equal to log n. And notice that this is the big capital N, which is a function. So uh, this makes sense because we're saying a function equals a function. All right, so um, wonderful, let's get started. Uh, D divides N, sum of lambda of D times one of N over D. And one of N over D is equal to one, so we can forget about this. And we have sigma lambda of d with d divides n. How do we compute this? This seems to be a little bit problematic for us. So let's uh, use, let's, let's jump back many, many centuries ago. Let's go back to ancient Egypt, I believe, where uh, Euclid uh, first thought of the uh, fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So the fundamental theorem of arithmetic says that I can take any number n and express it as the product of uh, certain uh, distinct primes, uh, each exponentiated to a varying power. So we have p1 to the power of alpha 1 times p2 to the power of alpha 2 dot 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 to pk to the power of alpha k. So we'll say that n is equal to that. Then it follows that, um, that, that the sum of d divides n uh, of lambda of d, which is equal to basically log of that, um, of, of p, if, if d is equal to some prime power p to the k, then this is equal to the sum over i of each alpha i times log p i. So wonderful, and, and we can think about why this makes sense. So uh, let's, let's jump back a minute and build our intuition here. So if we have n is equal to this, and we're trying to find uh, prime powers, and uh, we're, we're, because we're trying to evaluate the von Mangel function, which is lambda of d. So we need to consider, this is our input here. So, so uh, we're trying to find the divisors um, or, or the prime power divisors of n so that we can plug them into this input. And why are we trying to find the prime power divisors? It's because lambda of d takes only non-zero values when you, have, um, when you have prime powers. Everywhere else, lambda of, n, uh, of, of d is defined to be zero because if it's the product of uh, more than one distinct prime, it equals zero. So, uh, wonderful. So, so Lambda of d takes only uh, non-zero values at uh, prime powers, so we only need to consider the prime powers. So let's consider p1 to the everything from alpha, uh, everything from 1 to alpha 1, and uh, so p1 from everything from 1 to the alpha 1 is uh, one set of possible divisors that we can plug in here, and p2 to the power of everything from 1 to alpha 2 is another set of divisors that we could plug in here. And what do we get when we do that? Well, think about it. Uh, each, the, the, the power doesn't really matter because the lambda function, the von Mangel function, forgets about the power of the prime power. It, it just takes log p. So all we must do is uh, notice that there are alpha number or, or alpha i number of prime powers that we can plug in here. And for each one, for, for p1 to the power of 1, we'll get log p in, in, for, for our von Mangel function. For p1 to the power of 2, we'll also get log p. For p1 to the power of alpha, we'll also get log p. So what we get is uh, just, if we plug in this into our von Mangel function, we get alpha 1 times p, uh, log, log p1. 
And here we get plus alpha 2 times log p2. And on and on we get log uh, alpha k times log pk. So that's why we have some i equals 1 to k of uh, alpha i times log pi. And well, let's, let's evaluate what this is. So we have this sum here. And what happens when you sum a bunch of logarithms? Well, uh, first we can, we can note that this, uh, this coefficient of our logarithm can be pulled inside of the logarithm to become an exponent. So then we get sigma d divides, oh well, no, not d divides n, i to k, i equals 1 to k of log of p sub i to the power of alpha i. And, well, what do you get then? When you take the sum and expand it, it becomes log of p1 to the power of alpha 1 plus log of p2 to the power of alpha 2. And if you remember your rules of logarithms, you'll know that the sum of logarithms is the product of, uh, is, is the logarithm of a product. So specifically, uh, log uh, p1 to the power of p uh, of alpha 1 plus log p2 to the power of alpha 2 will become simply log of p1 to the power of alpha 1 times p2 to the power of alpha 2. So what this becomes when you sum over i equals 1 to k is equal to uh, product of uh, i equals 1 to k of log uh, pi to the power of alpha i. So wonderful. And, and what is this? May I ask, what, what is the product of, and, and we can actually pull the log outside. We, well, actually, that's, that's what we were supposed to do. My apologies, I wrote it wrong. Uh, it's, so we take the log of the product, as I earlier said. So log of the product from i equals 1 to k of pi to the power of alpha i. And what is this? This looks very, very familiar here. That's because it is n. We defined n, if you recall, as p1 to the power of alpha 1 times p2 to the power of alpha 2 all the way to pk to the power of alpha k. And that is exactly what this product is. So then what do we get? Finally, we get this is equal to n. So we have log of n. And therefore, we have proved our example. So wonderful. This then concludes our section on the Dirichlet convolutions. Thank you very much.